Good afternoon and welcome to Grain TV. It's July 12, 2013. I'm Logan Burgess. To my right here is Brock Shimano. Well, Brock, let's jump into fire tip. See how the grains closed out the week here, one day after the July WASDE report. As you can see, a lot of red on the board. We had old crop corn down 15 cents. New crop corn down 17 and three quarters. We had old crop beans off 34 and a quarter. New crop down 33 and a half. We had Chicago wheat down just two. Kansas City wheat unchanged on the day. Really seemed like some of the action that we saw yesterday, or I guess some of the numbers that were reported yesterday, uh, certainly were driving the trade today as far as seeing weakness in corn and soybeans and even a little bit of strength there in that wheat market. You know, I think you're right on there, Logan. A lot of the numbers that we did see yesterday started to take hold here today. And, you know, we came into the overnight session, we started selling off a little bit. But yeah. I think that the selling was really accelerated during the day session. We saw commodities funds get back in there and start adding shorts once again. Um, you know, corn, we saw 14,000 co contracts sold by commodity funds. We saw 10,000 yeah. contracts sold by soybeans. So I think that really accelerated the, the selling to the downside. And then what really uh, ended up in the middle of the day uh, affecting the market pretty pretty substantially was uh, a forecast that looked to be a little bit cooler than what were originally anticipated. Yeah, you're right, Brock. If we take a look here at uh, some models projecting the high temperatures across the weekend, as you can see here on Saturday, for much of the Corn Belt, it should be uh, pretty darn reasonable. 84 is about the high. As you can see, we are going to have a pocket of some pretty hot temperature out in Nebraska uh, and western Iowa. But as we go into Sunday here, you can see that it looks to be dissipating a bit. And really over the next week, it seems like a cooling pattern, uh, or some of the models that we're looking at should uh, show a cooling pattern developing with a little bit of precipitation. So I think that certainly uh, some of that weather premium that got built into this market leading up to Thursday's report maybe uh, got taken out of the market today. Certainly weather is gonna be the huge driver of this uh, grain market right now, really for the next several weeks. As we know, with the exceptionally late planting, we're not gonna really uh, be into heavy pollination until late July. So there's still a lot of time left on this crop. Keep an eye on weather. We'll help you keep posted on that here on Grain TV. Uh, one last thing here, Brock. I know we got an open numbers on Monday. What uh, what's kind of the trade expecting out of that? Yeah, today we did get the Reuters poll of analysts and what they expect for the NOPA crush numbers for June. Yeah. Uh, basically, the average of the analyst guess here on, on this table is uh, 117 million bushels uh, going to the crush facility during the month of June. The range was pretty wide, actually, 107.5 to 126.5. So a very wide range of the analyst guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and you compare that to May, we, it looks like it's going to be just a little bit lower than May. So the crush facilities did back off on their demand for for soybeans here a little bit yeah. and we've seen that actually take effect in the basis levels as well over the last week or so we've seen basis off pretty substantially for yeah soybeans. certainly and the crush number has really been something that's helped support those old crop bean futures uh, here moving forward so that will be a big driver on Monday we'll keep you posted on that as well in general though that kind of wraps up the week here for the grain market thanks a lot for joining us on grain TV have a great weekend we'll see you on Monday